All right, let's pray. So hands together, close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for this time. I just pray you bless this time as we uh, learn about your word. We learn about the spiritual fight we're in and the armor that we have to put on. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, who remembers what we learned last week? Oh, no, I should maybe start giving out a candy for remembering what we learned about last week. Who remembers? Do you remember? The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Let's quickly recap. Who remembers? Any of the nine fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember one? Remember one? All right, try, try again. Sarah, do you know one? No. Love. That's the first one. Very good. You know, oh, that was yours, was it? Maybe think of another one. You can put your hand back up. It's another one. Gentleness. Gentleness. Very good. Joy. That's one. Meekness. Meekness. Very good. Simon? Temperance, long suffering, goodness, very good. <laughs> Sarah, faith, faith, very good. So we got love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Very good. Against such there is no law. But today we are learning about the armor of God. The armor of God. Do you know that we're in a spiritual fight? It's not a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight. Physical fight. You need physical armor. You know, have you ever been in a fight? Hopefully you haven't been in a fight. But, you know, people fight these days. a physical fight. But we are in a spiritual fight. It's a fight of words, isn't it? This is why there's an armor. But we're going to find out today what are the pieces of the armor of God from Ephesians and what they're like because God tells us we have armor in the spiritual fight and they're like armor in the physical fight. Maybe you've learned about them before. If you came to Bible Club last year, you would have learned about them before. Here we go. Ephesians 6, 13. Wherefore, take unto you... You don't have to read it again. I'll read it to you. Wherefore, take unto you the whole... Armor of God. So armor is something you wear to protect yourself. But in a spiritual fight, what is it? We're going to learn about that today. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So the first one is, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Who knows where your loins are? What is your loins? Your loins girt about with truth. So what is this piece of the armor? Loins go about the truth. It is. It's a belt. It's like a big belt. Keep your pants up. And why is it truth? Because if you know the truth, you're not going to be ashamed. Your pants are not going to fall down. <laughs> hey, your pants fall down. That's not good. A no, belt keeps your pants up. Covers your nakedness, doesn't it? And so you're not ashamed. Covers that. So it's a belt. Loins go about with truth. So what do we have in the spiritual? Or, what is the belt? It's a truth, isn't it? Truth. Loins go about with truth. So remember these, because we're going to ask who remembers these at the end. Belt of truth, isn't it? Loins go about with truth. What's the second one? Having on the... Simon, you want to say this? Breastplate of righteousness. What's a breastplate? Anyone seen a breastplate? Here's a breastplate. Breastplate. This is a, like a, sort of like a t-shirt that they put on, or like a vest that they put on. It's made out of metal, so people can't hit you in the heart, hit you in the chest. So it's protecting your heart, isn't it? So what does the breastplate represent? Who remembers from that verse? Breastplate of, do you remember? It starts with an R. Breastplate of... Breastplate of righteousness. Very good. Same first letter as Ryan. Righteous Ryan. <laughs> there you go. Breastplate of righteousness. Why is breastplate of righteousness? Because when you're doing the right thing, your heart is right with God, isn't it? Protecting your heart. Okay, so just remember that. Breastplate of righteousness. Next one. Ephesians 6.15. And your feet. Feet. Shod. What does shod mean? Shod is when you put things on, cover it on. 
feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we have the preparation of the gospel of peace on our feet. So these are boots in the armour. Boots in the armour. The boots is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Getting ready. So why in the armour, in the spiritual armour of God, is the preparation of the gospel of peace. Why are they boots, shoes that you have to put on? Who thinks they know the answer? You know the answer? Yeah, well, that's one thing that boots do. Definitely stop you from picking on. You ever stepped on a prickle? Ah, not gonna, not gonna, no prickles are going to get through this one, right? They're made of metal. But why is it shoes? Because we go and preach the gospel. See, sometimes when you're leaving your home, you don't always go barefoot, do you? You know, you need to go on a journey somewhere far, you've got to put shoes on so you can travel. So, this is why preparation of the gospel of peace is shoes, because you're going to go, the boots. Okay, preparation of the gospel of peace. Next one. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Why? Wherewith? He shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What does that mean? What's a fiery dart? Who knows what arrows are? You guys know what arrows are? So you have a shield. Sometimes you don't know where the arrow is coming from, but faith helps protect you from those attacks that you don't always see coming. The fiery darts of the wicked. So here I got this picture. Here. This looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Now this guy, well, he's got his breastplate on. Shield, and look, all these arrows that he stopped with his shield. So likewise, the spiritual armor, sometimes we believe things in the word of God. We don't always see it, and that helps protect us from spiritual attacks, from the fiery darts of the wicked. Sometimes people make fun of you for being Christian, but if you have faith, then you can protect yourself. Okay? Two more. Ephesians 6.17, take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. So remember, faith is the shield. What's the helmet? What's the helmet? Abel, what's the helmet? What's the helmet, you know? Helmet of salvation. All right, helmet of salvation. Okay, so here's a helmet. Look at this one. Is anybody in there? I don't know if there's anybody in there. Maybe it's just a statue. I can't see any eyes. So here's a helmet. Why is salvation a helmet? Because when we believe on Jesus Christ, we get the Spirit, we're given a sound mind, aren't we? We understand things through faith once we're saved. So the helmet protects our mind, doesn't it? Salvation. Okay, helmet of salvation. We'll do one more. Now, up, up until this point in the armor of God, think about what we have. Moines get about with truth. Right? The breastplate of righteousness. Put your hand down, Simon. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. Now, up until this point, everything we've looked at it's defensive, isn't it? It's protecting us. Now, can you win a war by only defending? No. You've got to attack. And you've got to attack. Right? <laughs> so, in our armor of God, what is our offensive weapon? Do you know before I get it? A sword. Very good. You saw, if you were reading ahead, you would have seen it, eh? And the sword of sal oh, sword of the Spirit, which is, what is it? The Word of God. It's the Bible, isn't it? That's our offensive weapon. So in this spiritual war of words, our offensive weapon, we need to know God's Word. Hey, you two, don't muck around, please. Pay attention. No, oh, pay attention. Okay. You guys too, pay attention. This one's very important. You need to know your offensive weapon. It's the Bible. That's why you need to know the Word of God. You guys have a Bible, you've got to read it. You've got to study, you've got to know it. Because in this spiritual war, if you want to win, you need the sword of the Spirit. It's the Word of God. Look at this. Look at this picture I found. 
I would say the Word of God, if it was represented as a physical weapon, it would be a bit like this, right? A sword that's on fire. Doesn't that look pretty cool? The sword of the Spirit. Oh, okay. Let's see how many you remember. Let's see how many you remember. Okay, first one is, who remembers what the belt represents? What, what is the spiritual belt? Zephi. Remember? Truth. Very good. Loins get about with truth. Next one. What does the breastplate, what is the spiritual breastplate? Ryan. Righteousness, right? You go, righteous Ryan, right? So you're going to remember that one now. <laughs> oh, the boots. The boots. Who remembers the boots? You guys already had a turn. We'll give somebody else a turn. What do the boots represent? Simon? Peace. The pre oh, we'll keep going. What else? Preparation of the... Zephy? What's the... No, no, that one's the, yeah, that's the helmet. Sarah, have a go. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Very good. So this you go. That's why it's on your shoes, isn't it? Two more. What is it? The shield of... Starts with F. Faith. Very good, Jordan. Shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And who remembers this one? The helmet of salvation. Very good. Keeping your mind sound. And last one, our offensive weapon is which is word of God. Very good, Timothy. Okay, all right, so Katarina, we're going to play some games today. We're talking about war, we're talking about armor, so we're going to do some spiritual fighting <laughs> in the games. All right, let's stand up. Okay, make sure you pay attention to Katarina, please.